Hi, this is Karen Page with Big Hairy Dog, recording a webinar for Retail Pro Software version 9. Uh, there are five core areas of Retail Pro that I'm going to take you through, and we're going to do sort of a cliff note version of the demo. And I'm happy to do a deeper demo one-on-one -on -one with each account that needs that. So the center of the screen could be an open and closing checklist. It could be your web store. It could be whatever you'd like here. Uh, this is pretty open. Uh, the main toolbar is typically across the top where you can click and get a drop-down menu. What I've done is I've actually created my, my five core areas of Retail Pro off to the side in a simpler one-button touch menu. So I could click on Inventory, go right into the core inventory. We'll go into Receipts as a section there and ring up Point of Sale. I'll take you through Purchase Orders and we'll talk about POs and Auto POs, which is uh, the area where the system can kind of walk the floor got a suggested purchase order for you based on stock levels and such. And then we'll go receive uh, and do what, what a, we call a receiving voucher. So reading, receiving it in, in the back room as products showing up. Beyond that, we'll talk about reporting. Uh, up at the top here, there's customer management, true CRM within Retail Pro, and employee management. So there's some buttons up here at the top we'll look at. But first, we'll just go into inventory and examine the inventory screen. So this is an infinite sheet of paper, an infinite spreadsheet, just like Excel, uh, where it's very flexible. You can drag and drop the columns of information. Uh, so let me explain this screen a little bit. We've got the ALU, which is the alternate lookup, and typically that might be a former system number that imports into the system. So uh, if you're coming from another package, that might have a barcode that says 1234. That number could drop there uh, into the alternate lookup. Uh, it can also be a keyword search or any number you'd like. So we can have it start at 1, and it's just a quick hot and but button that you could uh, type in at point of sale there. The vendor code is six characters, and this is a, a short uh, code. We also have a full description or a full name for the vendor for reporting, just depending on how you'd like to see that. DCS is department class subclass. So this is three, three, and three characters, a total of nine there. And that could be, for example, women's jersey team. Uh, so if I ran just the letter W in a report to see how all my women's product is doing, it would give me everything, not just jerseys. And uh, if I just wanted to run J for jersey, it would give me men's, women's, youth. It would give me all jerseys. And I can break that out and compare one division to another. So there are really three tiers that can cross over and segment. And it sets the foundation for one level of reporting. So the trainer will spend some time there and they'll probably even pull from what other, other companies have done, uh, just to give you some, um, something to start with so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, attribute is typically color, but it can be a second size. It could be a metal. It could be a flavor. Anything you want it to be an attribute. We've got the description of the product. We've got size, uh, store on hand here, margin, price, and cost. And these three fields play off each other. So. Uh, so if you put in, for example, uh, a price that you want to sell it for is $139.95, the system's going to tell you that that's an 85.71 margin. So it is fractional. It gives you that last uh, fraction. And, it, and in a lot of systems, it rounds it off so you're losing that fractional margin. Uh, but if you know two, it tells you the third, um, whatever that is. Or if you knew these two, it would tell you what the price might be and suggest a price. Even round that price so it can set parameters and say everything under 500 bucks to do this. Round to the nearest five bucks or round to the nearest dollar offset by a nickel, that sort of thing. Uh, <coughs> UPC code is the unique product code that comes on a can of Coke or it comes on, a, on a, uh, a product from the manufacturer. So it is unique. So that is our identifier. If you wanted to scan that in there, then that's another way to point at it for the point of sale. So you could have our barcode, a former barcode, or the UPC code. They can all be pointing to that same line of inventory. So either way you scan that, that'll pull in that particular product. I've got, uh, I added weight uh, because we do push up through to web store, for example. But if I want to, I can design the screen and just right click and, and take weight off the screen, add something else I care about. Uh, there are up to 10, there's 10 pages here uh, on the bottom that I can add, but I believe I can now expand that uh, to as many pages as I because I'd like to fit on the screen. Um, up at the top, I've got my search fields. I can just click. And for example, if you don't care about auxiliary four, I can right click and delete that. 
maybe I would like to add some other field, uh, another description field to search by something. So I just throw it up on the screen there. So the one thing, if I had to describe Retail Pro with one word, it would be flexibility because every screen is designable, the reports are designable, the tags, the receipts, every document designable. Um, so the customer gets to decide what they're looking at and how they search and so forth. Okay, so this is that, uh, that long sheet of paper for searching. It's the inventory. Uh, we can also design the buttons off to the right side here if we'd like. Uh, but just going in, let's go into this jersey, for example, and look at it in a style view. So Retail Pro, just in general, is in 52,000 installations. It's in 86 countries. It's in 19 languages. And the reason that it is uh, so well known across the globe is flexibility and this matrix grid uh, is one key reason, I think. Uh, so it's an infinite grid. It can have as many sizes going across the top as you'd like, as many colors or attributes going down the left side. So for soft goods, we are a fabulous fit. For hard goods as well, we're a fabulous fit. So this is just one piece of it. But, uh, but in those 52,000 installs, we're in more than 100 sports teams. We're in some very famous uh, accounts out there that will be glad to give you as references. Most of our customers are small to medium-sized store chains, but, um, uh, but we do have some very large accounts that could write their own software and do whatever they'd like that choose us because it is so flexible and designable. It kind of wraps itself around the way you do business. Okay, so just to put in, let's go put in a Patagonia jacket, for example. If I say new, and we're, right now we aren't in a PO. We are in just core inventory. Uh, so when I click here on new, it will take me to a... a pretending it's first day on the job when we're just putting in brand new product. So I'm going in to grab a scale, and I might just grab um, a standard medium to extra large scale, or I might grab uh, a jacket scale, something like that. So I just grab one that says small to 2XL. It has one color, which is black. I can just click to add any color for the season I want. Maybe it comes in fern, pistachio, or you know yellow. It comes in... Um, red and it comes in blue and maybe it comes in 3XL here also. So I can just add to this grid on the fly. Department class, subclass, I can just click right here and I'm going to go grab, if I type W for women's for example, it's going to hone in on that using these three tiers. So you'll notice that you've grabbed anything with a W in it basically. So let's say this is a women's jacket ski or women's jacket lined, one of these. Um, I can just grab that, say OK. Uh, the vendor code, uh, if I were to, to go grab Patagonia, I could just type in Patagonia or the characters for it. Or I can go look at it in uh, the Rolodex here. So there is a vendor Rolodex. First day on the job with this, you do go in and put in the vendor account name and, and the contact, maybe the email, all the information that you want. And again, we can have pages of information here with uh, the statistics for that vendor, any information you'd like. It is all very designable. So when I say that, I mean I can right click and I can move buttons around. I can you know, have the vendor image over here. I can have a bigger notes section for myself for vendor notes. Um, everything about it is designable down to the color and what we're looking at. So if I just take that color blue, I can change it and look at whatever I'd like. Um, so every screen is designable to that degree where it's right click and design. Uh, so you don't need a programmer or anything fancy. All right, so I'm, I just put in Patagonia. Let's say that this is a, a ski jacket uh, with hood and lined fur, uh, lined. And then I'm going to put in, uh, there's, there's, like say, four description fields here. I could just right click and add those to the screen and fill those in. But I'll leave it at just a simple ski jacket uh, description there. Uh, let's say the cost of this to me is $50. And in the, the Rolodex for the, the uh, department, I put in a 50 margin at the suggestion point. It is just a suggestion, so it suggests the 100 price. But I can say I want to sell it for 125, and you'll notice that it tells me that's a 60 margin. So again, these two fields play off each other, and it tells you the third. And if I wanted to put in you know, the margin dollars I want to make, it would also roll up and tell me the price I should sell that for. And even around it, like we talked about. So here, uh, this is... This is the hard part. This is going in and saying we got two of everything. Uh, and this is a multi-store, multi-dimensional grid as well. It's a three-dimensional grid that I can put in uh, different stores, different, uh, really, so many things going to this grid. Let me show you. 
So I've got 60 items. If I want to, I can see all my stores, and I can even flip the store to the left so I can see 000 is my warehouse where I have two of everything. I have nothing in my first store, nothing in my second store yet. But you see how that's a multi-dimensional grid. Uh, if I just want to save all of that, uh, we just put in a ton of product all at once. So when I go click on items, I can go see all of those individual items in the system. And there they are. So we put in a, a lot of jackets. I'm going to move the UPC down there. A lot of these ski jackets, there they are. They're fully lined, uh, two quantity. Uh, now if I want to, I'll go back to the grid. Retail Pro is unique because we allow for different sizes and uh, to have different costs and different prices. A lot of systems, you know, for a 3XL, if it costs you a little more, you'd have to start a whole other grid. Retail Pro, I'm going to go right to grid values. And, I, and right now I've got quantity there. Let's say I want to see a unit uh, unit cost. So maybe instead of 50, it's 55 in these uh, larger jackets. I can just go in there and do that. I can also sell it for a little bit more. So if I want to say unit price, maybe instead of, uh, maybe I'll just say 133. Just to keep it real simple here. Okay, so different prices, different costs, all in the same grid. So big and tall stores love us for that reason. Uh, oops, and I'm going to just say okay. All right, now I'm going to go back to, um, to the grid value of quantity there. Uh, so I can also right-click, say add it to my file, and I'm going to go pick from uh, some pictures that I have on my desktop here. So just real quick, I'll scroll down to some, some jackets, and we will just grab a, a Patagonia jacket there. Okay? All right. So I can have up to 10 pictures. Uh, they can push up through to a web store. So if you wanted to just have side views, uh, go in and get all sorts of views of this jacket, we can do that. And all of that can push on up through to a web store. Retail Pro also handles multiple, uh, multiple vendors and multiple UPC codes. So if you had this jacket, you could get it from five different vendors or, or 100. It doesn't matter. It's unlimited vendors and unlimited UPC codes. Okay, so I'm saving all of that. That's basically the hard part is putting on the blinders, biting the bullet, and entering inventory that you already have in the store. That's the hard part. Uh, certainly importing from a, a vendor list and a, a customer list and an item list from your former system, that's all something we can talk about importing. Uh, but Perfect World is plugging it in there fresh and, and starting fresh, looking at this as an opportunity to rework the way you do your uh, inventory. Okay, so I just put in that product. Uh, let me go back to items for a moment. Let's pretend that this product is reorderable. Uh, Retail Pro is a very slick way of walking the floor and kicking out a suggested purchase order for us. So if we have two, and I said I always want to at least have five of this little guy, I'll just save that. Uh, this jacket, I want five at all times. It plugged in five for everything, and I can certainly uh, put in different quantities at different uh, for different sizes and such and in different colors. But I'm telling it that I've sold down to two. I've tricked it. It thinks I've sold down to two. So when I go ask the computer to walk the floor for Patagonia, for example, it will kick out a suggested list of product bringing me up to the five, which should be a quantity of three. So I'll just say OK to this. And let's go do that. Let's have the computer walk the floor and kick us out a, a suggested list. And it will actually create the purchase order for us. So we'll look at that. OK, so I'm going to go once a week, once a month. You might go to AutoPO. And uh, maybe the Patagonia rep is on the phone saying, what do you need? Uh, we can have it look at things that have been transferred from other locations, look at special orders. It's going to look at all of that. Uh, and uh, there's so much here, I won't go into detail. But, uh, but you can say, fill me to my minimum, fill me to a maximum level. Uh, maybe it's the holidays or peak season that you want to go to a, a custom level. Okay, and I'm going to just say fill me to my minimum and say next. Uh, I'm going to go edit and we're going to look at, we're going to cancel everything out and I'm going to go look at uh, going, excuse me, uh, let me back up just a second here. Go filling to my minimum and if I say next uh, and I'm going to edit and say take out, uh, I'm going to clear out that vendor, I'm going to put in Patagonia. Okay, so I'm going to just click on this. Um, we can just scroll through and grab Patagonia. 
and I'm going to just check that out. So if they're on the phone and they want to know what do you need in jackets, I could just go look at jackets or I can look at all Patagonia. And when I say next and finish, it's going to give me sort of a list to look at here. So there's a bunch of product and I do have some other Patagonia jackets in here, like Patagonia jacket with sleeves. This is my jacket hood with line that we did and you can see that there's two. It's saying you need three more to bring up to your five. And there are some other product in here too, but I'm going to just say OK to this. So what it does is it creates the purchase order for me and I can go out and look in my purchase orders and there will be a Patagonia purchase order there. There it is. It's 100% unfilled and if I go to my form view to take a look at it, you can see that it's crea created this purchase order filling me up to my minimum so it's got three and then I've got some other Patagonia info or uh, jackets in here as well. Okay, so it created the PO. Now from this purchase order I can say go ahead and email this off to the vendor. I can just say print it and email it. Uh, typically I look at the order date is today and there's just a little drop down calendar there. I can say uh, the ship date might be in a couple weeks and if this is not in my back door by let's say December 1st, I want to be red flagged about that. So jackets, for example, if you're getting jackets the wrong time of the year, you're going to have to take a hit on it and discount it to get it out the door. The system pays attention to that for you and it will automatically kick out a report every day that says who's past cancel as of yesterday. So you can get on the phone with Patagonia and say where's our jackets, what's going on, um, beat them up on some free freight or whatever. Okay, so we've just, uh, we've created the PO. Let's say uh, the PO number, for example, I can have this start with Patagonia. I can automate that so it puts Patagonia into the name and then I can just put I'm expecting it 12, 12, 12, something like that. Any instructions I want, I can just put them in there, ship complete, include PO number on packing slips. Let's say this looks pretty good. I'm going to save it. I can print this and uh, I'm going to just print to 49ers who is one of our, our teams there and I'm going to print right to the screen so we can see. Oops, I'm going to print it off to the side. Okay, and there was a few different jackets there so it's breaking them up into grids with all three. There's a Denali jacket, there's my ski jacket with hood and so forth. Um, <clears throat> I can really design this so every document, like I say, could look the way we want. This is one design and I can certainly just drop it to PDF. The trainer's job is to get in there and help you put in the factor, put in the billing, the shipping, uh, however you want this to look and, and help create it. And then you could just send this off to your vendor that way. This is one view of it. Uh, let's, let's print one more so you can see that you can also print lineal. And I'm going to just print this one lineal so you can see it goes line by line. Uh, and of course, Archibald Sisters is another account for us. So we would put, you know, ship to, billing, vendor information. If I'd taken the time to put in their fax and so forth, their email, that could show up there under vendor info. And again, it can just list everything out in sort of a lineal view. Scrolling down to the bottom there. Okay, so let's say it looks pretty good. You email that off to the vendor. Um, there are there's so much more here as far as uh, as far as how to how to predestine where this is going if you're a multi-store. There's a lot of things where we can say, okay, I want to apply an allocation pattern, and it's all set where it's going to go ten to this store, ten to that store, so on. So divvy it up however you want. So when it does show up at a receiving place, a central receiving, for example, it could be all set and destined to go to the store. So it's an absolute no-brainer for the receiving person. It'll just say, do you want to print your transfer packing slips? And he just says, yes, I do. Those would spit out and do the transfers for him so that he just packs it and ships it. So there's a lot of multi-store functionality that I'm skipping past here for you uh, that we certainly can do on a deeper demo. All right, so I'm going to just say this looks pretty good. We emailed this off to the vendor and then let's go receive it, sell it, and report on it. So you go to what we call the receiving voucher. So uh, UPS shows up at the back door, your boxes roll off the back of the truck, you rip open your box, you pull out your packing slip, and then you come over to the system and say, what did we actually get? Okay, so you go to the PO section. Let's say all we know is it's Patagonia. You start typing in Patagonia, and you get the Patagonia POs that are outstanding. There it is. So we reference that and say PO items, and it shows me exactly what we should be getting in these jackets. And uh, I actually don't have it set to show the picture there, but I can. I, I can have a picture of the product as well. Okay, but let's say that this looks pretty good. Uh, we're going to go say receive due, and it fits in all the quantities of what you should be getting. 
but you can back out the couple you didn't get. I got zero of that, zero of that, two of, or excuse me, two of those, and they overshipped me. I got five of those. All right, so you put in reality. You say okay, and it pops you over here to the receiving section. So we've received in a bunch of these jackets, and most of them are threes, um, but a few of them we backed out, okay? All right, so now the second that I say print and update, this is an inventory. Even before I can tag it and put it on the floor, it's there. So right now I'll go in and say, um, uh, let's see, <clears throat> just checking my quantities, I'm going to say print and update. And I'll print it to a document, although we don't have to. Uh, that's your receiving voucher. That's your document of what just came in the back door. And it will automatically track those back orders. But there is a permanent paper trail here of what happened. Okay? Uh, we do integrate to QuickBooks, BusinessWorks, Math90, Great Plains, and Acpac Accounting, those five packages. And there are little spots where it would check off once it's flown through. It's actually, uh, once it has gone through to QuickBooks, for example, you could uh, check it off and it would, the system would automatically track that going over to accounts payable, accounts receivable, general ledger, payroll, so forth. Okay, so going back into form view here for a moment, um, I could now say print my tags and it would just spit out those tags three per second. Uh, let me print one for you so you can kind of get a, a picture of it. And uh, we print those tags out. The tags can look any way you want. You can have a secret cost code, a secret date code. Uh, they can be perforated, different stickiness levels. We sell out all of that tag stock and consumables and we beat um, virtually any price out there by 10%. We want you to have one phone number to call for everything. Okay, so we tag our product, we put it on the floor. Uh, one thing I will say here is there is a neat feature of spreading the freight. So if you watch, watch the cost and watch the margins of mostly 60 there. Um, I'm going to say the freight on this, this pretty big order is big. It's 900 bucks. Okay, so if I say spread that freight over the cost of goods and show me my real margin, your real margin goes down to this 57.35. You can say, all right, unspread it, put it back in a separate account, and it puts the margins back at 60 for the most part there. Okay, so you can spread it, unspread it, put it in a separate expense account in QuickBooks, and you're done. Uh, let's say that you get the bill from Patagonia and they want to get paid. You would go in here and put in the invoice number that they gave you and the date that it's okay to pay them. And then that's tagged for transmission. That's now going to go through the link into the correct columns in the QuickBooks when your accounting person presses the button there. Uh, that's going to go through our integration link. And uh, it is a nice time saver. We do have someone on staff whose whole world is the link and training on the link. So uh, if that's of interest, that's for QuickBooks, BusinessWorks, Math90, Great Plains, and ActPack. Those are the five packages Retail Pro integrates with. All right, so I'm going to save all of that. We've received it. Uh, we have tagged it, and now we can go sell it. So we'll go in and bring up a sale and uh, run a, a couple of reports for you. So it's item 2402, and I'm going to go ahead and sell that, that jacket. Okay, so now I'm going to receipt. And point of sale, this is where it's hard to show how slick the scanning is over the phone, but, uh, but you will get the idea here. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and just say, oops, excuse me. I'm going to say new. And it will open up a brand new sale here. I can say Smith, put in the phone, um, and I'm going to, or phone number, last name, however I want to draw in that customer. But I don't have to put in a customer. Uh, we're not a Radio Shack system where you have to put in name, address, phone number, and someone's trying to buy a battery. This is simple, but you can just literally type in or scan in the item right here. Uh, you can type a keyword like T for T-shirt, and it will throw in a T-shirt. So like I said, a keyword, a scan of a barcode is perfect world because scanning is accuracy and speed. Uh, and then we'll go tender. Here's where if you swipe the Visa, it knows that a Visa starts with a 4. You wouldn't have to choose Visa card like I'm doing here. And it would just go through and print the receipt. You wouldn't have to pick a receipt design like I'm about to do. It would just go right to the receipt and print and cut automatically. Let me make this bigger so you can see it. So of course it would have your logo at the top, it would have a return barcode maybe at the very bottom there or your Facebook or whatever social media or message you want to present to your customers. 
this is all designable. Again, it's, it's literally, if you hand wrote it the way you want it to look, we could knock it out that way. Or you could. We train you how to do this as well, so you don't need us at our hourly rate. Okay, so that's point of sale. It's very straightforward. Uh, there are buttons for doing returns. Uh, there's the customer Rolodex here, which is very nice. You can choose to capture customer information. We do have an automated email receipt, which is very nice also, that it, when I click on customer, let's just take a reach page here, for example. Uh, I can go in and see her, her Rolodex. I know what uh, marketing efforts we've done. She's been in my 3 plus transaction uh, mailers. You know, these are some things that we've done via email. We do, um, we integrate to constant contact and a company called OptCulture that does email marketing blasts to your cell phone. Uh, <clears throat> we have her statistics here, which is very nice, where I can see she's been in 34 visits, the month, month to date and year to date uh, sales returns, uh, year to date sales, uh, return transactions, and, and total sales. I love that we can see the total margin dollars. So is she a great customer? Yes. And if she brings in something past the 30-day window, I'll go ahead and give it to her because I can quickly at a glance see that she's, you know, she's a good customer. Uh, you've got her history here where you can click and see everything she's ever purchased, sale by sale. Uh, so each one with item detail down at the bottom. And I can break up and see special order history, sales history. I can click and go right to the document if I want. Let me back up out of there. Okay, so that's just at a glance, very quick overview of point of sale. Again, the screens can look how we want. If this is too busy or if you don't track customers, I right click and take that off the screen. I can move things around, make fonts bigger. You know, if you've got volunteers and you don't want them to get lost, we can set the tab order to go just from item to tender to print. Okay, so I'm going to back out of here. And uh, Z out is the end of day. I'm going to go right to the Z out, uh, X out, Z out. And here's where you can do a, a blind Z out if you want and force, uh, excuse me, force the clerk to put in how many dimes, nickels, quarters, pennies, and so forth. Um, I'm going to just go in and run it and just show you what a simple, uh, I'll do the 49ers, uh, sales, returns, net. It's going to give you that breakout of everything. So all the ins and outs of the drawer for the day, uh, paid in, damage, these are discount types, receipt count. Uh, you've got your dollars, uh, every credit card broken out, and we have a deeper report called a tender rec that will give you tender reconciliation with a lot more detail if you'd like it by Visa, MasterCard, and so forth. Okay, so that is the Z out for the end of the day. Uh, there is also customer management. So you can say, all right, let's, let's look at my customers. Uh, like I said, we have, some, uh, we have a tool now that is closer to true CRM where you can say, show me all my $50 plus over transactions or people who've purchased between $500 and $1,000 in this time period. And it records it. So you can go back and see what you've done here. You can say, show me the customers that fell into that category. And if we'd like, we can force it to just show you customers uh, with email, for example. Uh, so here's $50 plus average transactions. I can go in and say, all right, I want to uh, do an email blast uh, just to this group, uh, and I want to export that out or send it to Constant Contact. Like I said, we, we integrate to that. Um, but it can just shoot it right to Excel, and there it is. And then, of course, you can go drop that into Constant Contact that way. So once you've got that customer list, then you can go to bins and scoring and take it one step further, which is segmenting it and, and uh, drilling down deeper into it. So let's say that you only have dollars to market to the top 10% of your customer base uh, by average sale. So I could say, show me those bins, break it into three chunks or three bins. So let's say I had 900 customers, it would go 300, 300, 300. Uh, and it would say, these were from this price to this price, that's bin one, this price to this price, uh, bin two, uh, with you know 300 customers. In this case, it's only three, I don't have that many. Your top customers spend $208 to $236. That's chunked into bin three there. And if I say, show me those customers, it's going to drill down even deeper and show me that these are those people. OK, so I can basically go in and market just to them. And it's important to be able to segment and bin and score like this, because let's say you've got people that come in all the time. 
but they're going to your discount bin and you can see that they're discount shoppers because they don't buy by a high average margin. Uh, then you, on the other hand, you've got people that come in once, you know, once a year, but they spend a fortune when they're in there. You don't have to convince that guy to come in. You have to convince him to, uh, excuse me, you don't have to convince him to spend more. You convince him to come in. The other customer that is on the discount rack all the time, you don't have to convince them to come in, but you do want to convince them to spend more. So these are two different, very different marketing efforts, and that's why you want to be able to chop it up like this and then mark it out to those people and, uh, and tailor that. Okay, so there's that. And then finally, we do have Mobile POS. Uh, the Mobile POS, we're calling it the game changer. We have um, team stores, the 49ers. There's customers out there that are doing uh, this Mobile POS application now where you can scan. Uh, it's a line buster. It's also where you can be out in the woods uh, scanning. There's, certain, there's other Mobile POS that we offer where literally you don't have to be on the network. But these are designed for on the network uh, you've seen these maybe at Nordstrom's and such where they're scanning uh, scanning the product, signing with the finger, emailing the receipt, or it goes right into Retail Pro as a former receipt. It's very nice because it's immediate, it's instant. You could turn it into a special order if you had to at the point of sale there for deeper functionality. But it's all very slick and it's all very fast. The mobile POS lets you see shoulder to shoulder with the customer, even see a picture of the product right there on the handheld. And it is iPad, iPod, iPhone. Uh, let's see if I've got my iPad picture there. I'll try and find that. Excuse me. There it is. So the iPad, uh, same thing. It's just the mobile POS. Uh, you can stand right there and, and uh, basically send it right off to the customer and, uh, excuse me, to your system and then email the receipt to the customer. Okay, I hope that makes sense to everybody. And uh, please call Karen Page at, uh, and you can ask for a, a more in-detail demo if this wasn't sufficient. I'm at 800-993-5009, or we can book an appointment at 800-377-7776. You can ask for Megan. Thanks so much for your time.